In the dead of the night, Tran hears the mournful tones of a harp drifting on the air. He tells them of Katesha, the holy creature who once soared through the clouds with Erdrin upon her back, and of the great floating island they must find. He also pledges to find some means by which she might be summoned. The party retired to the inn to await the results of his investigation, but Tran finds himself unable to sleep. Ever since she was a child, Serena has always been somewhat lacking in drive. Where Veronica led the way, Serena would blindly follow. Indeed, it was Veronica alone who insisted they should seek out the Luminary, she who convinced their parents to let them leave. Serena does not have the courage to challenge the Lord of Shadows. My pretty Luminary, do not lead her into any more danger. Her place now is not with you, but with her parents. Not only for their peace of mind, but for hers also. Another precious flower of Arboria plucked too soon. Another irreplaceable life gone in an instant. I am wary of tragedy. I must attend another funeral. Let it be my own. Veronica and Serena have always been as one. Before they departed to seek you out, they spent every waking moment together. The memory of her dear sister would never be far from Serena's heart, I am sure. In this way, at least, they will remain together forevermore. Veronica's parents were struck numb with grief at learning of their daughter's passing. As such, all the responsibilities for a funeral service fell to Serena. She saw the ceremony through admirably, but it must have taken a heroic effort to hold back her tears. The poor girl. You are having trouble sleeping, I take it. It is to be expected. Veronica was a dear friend to all of us. It was only natural that her passing should come as a shock. Dawn is still many hours away. Why not take a walk around the village to clear your mind? Take as much time as you need. It's almost as if the sky is crying. It was raining like this when I last saw your mother. That night, when I fell into the river and you drifted away from me, I swore that I would one day grow strong enough to protect the people I love. But I still have a long way to go. We're lucky Veronica had the strength that I didn't. Eleanor, my dear wee lassie. Erwin, my boy. Tran, will you promise me something? How about you wait until your old granddad pops his clogs before you go shuffling off this mortal coil? The people of Verdrea are made of stern stuff. We can deal with whatever Mordigan throws at us, but a world where the odd outlived the young? That's not a world I want to live in. When Mordigan was reborn as the Lord of Shadows, the fate of this world was thrown into disarray. If only I had realized that Jasper was in the demon's thrall, perhaps I could have stopped him. Perhaps Veronica would still be alive today. Ah, oh, Luminary, brings you out here all alone at this late hour. This path leads to the top of the mountain. It is a sacred place where none may set foot without the Holy Father's permission. Forgive me, but I must ask that you turn back for the third time. Ah, Luminary, you are having trouble sleeping, I see. The strange floating island that I saw in my vision must surely have some connection with your fate. As must Cetacea, the divine being upon whose back your predecessor once rode. I shall scour every volume in the village to glean some clue as to how Cetacea might be summoned. If I should learn anything of note, I will send for you immediately. A memorial to Veronica's memory is to be erected in the grove north of the village. She and Serena would often play there together when they were children. It is a peaceful place. I pray that her spirit may find a similar serenity in the next life. This poor child lost his entire family in the aftermath of the Lord of Shadow's destruction of the World Tree. Every night since, he has tossed and turned restlessly in his sleep. No matter how many tears one spills for a loved one, it will not bring them back. Slowly but surely, one must build one's life anew. Oh, Mortigan. Please don't take her away! The lady who lives here lost her children in the fall. She has taken in a young boy who lost his family too. As for me, I just help around the house once in a while. There are a few families in Arboria that have not lost loved ones at the Lord of Shadow's hands. I imagine the same is true all over Ordrea.
Throughout the ceremony, the tears did not cease to fall from Fidelis and Alma's eyes. They returned to their home as soon as it was complete, but I doubt they will find any more comfort there. Do not disturb them, I prithee. I hear a mournful melody drifting on there. Who would be playing a harp outside in this weather, I wonder? There's something I must tell you, Tran. I am not Veronica and Serena's father, nor is Alma their mother. I am sure they both realized long ago that this was the case, but they were never so unkind as to say it. I hope that we have always loved them as we would have done children of our own. The pain of losing Veronica is almost too much to bear. I would happily have departed this world in her place. Some 18 years ago, Father Benedictus found a basket lying beneath the old oak in the grove north of the village. Two baby girls lay inside it, crying for their mother. My husband and I had long wished to start a family, but the heavens had not provided until that day. We took them in and raised them as our own. Father Benedictus told us he sensed a great power within them, that they were the heirs to the soul of the Holy Sage. But that was not what mattered most. What mattered was that they needed us, and so we strove to raise them as best we could, to love them and to make them happy. Yet even so, they have met with naught but death and despair. Oh, my poor, sweet Veronica. The holy braziers must be kept burning throughout the night. It is my duty to ensure that they stay lit until morning. The locks of hair that we offer unto the flames are the last gift that we give to our kinsmen. The divine light of their burning guides our friends' souls to Yggdrasil's holy heart. The amount of hair offered reflects the depth of feeling for the dearly departed. After the loss of a spouse or close relation, it is not uncommon for the bereaved to give half their hair or more. The couple sitting at the other table lost their newborn child after Yggdrasil fell. They have spoken nearer a word since the ceremony ended. They just sit there, staring into space. They pray that the holes in their hearts can one day heal. My wife has been in deep despond ever since the fall of Yggdrasil took our newborn son from us. This is the first time since the dark day that I have seen her smile. The long road still stretches before us, but with every small step, we draw a little closer to the happiness we once shared. Ever since my son passed away, I have thought of nothing but following him into the next world. Until tonight, that is. The ceremony for the repose of Veronica's soul reminded me of a time long ago when she and I shared our dreams for the future. I told her that I wished only to make a happy home in our boyer, and I still can, so long as I keep fighting. Veronica would be so angry with me if I gave in to my grief. For more than a month, tea I've served my customers has been brewed from the dry and dusty sweepings of Harvest's past. Tonight, however, I'm serving the last of the premium blend. When one knows not what tomorrow will bring, it is only natural to save such luxuries for a rainy day. I only hope that this small pleasure can help clear the rain clouds from my customers' hearts. Another of Yggdrasil's blessed leaves withers and dies. I have lost count of the number of funerals I have had the misfortune presiding over since the world tree fell. There have been so many since I took over the responsibilities of our late priest, but alas, it gets no easier. Forgive me. What brings you to our church in a dead of night, child? Let's see here, I did this side already. Came from... and that... Okay, I think I did all the... Hey, there's only three houses. It feels like there's a lot more. And then there's Savando. I haven't found Eric, though. Hey there, honey. Can't sleep either, huh? Oh, well, we all need time to think, but try not to brood too much over things you can't change, okay? I wanted to make everybody in Ardrea smile, but with the world the way it is, that's an impossible dream. There are things that even I, the great Silvando, can't do. Ugh, it's that depressing music. It's making me all mopey. It's coming from behind the inn. Sounds a lot like Serena's harp. Here's Eric. People come and people go. That's just the way the world works, I guess. Why did she have to go so soon? She could have said something at least. I had stuff that I wanted to talk to her about. So does that everyone? Let's see, that I talked to Jade, Silvando, Eric, Rab, and Hendrik. I think that's everyone. Aside from, of course, the quest progression character, Serena. Promise, promise, so oh my love. Now we'll wait in the bows above that our leaves might bloom together. Though time hath torn thee from my arms and time hath wrought us countless harms, 
time shall make us one forever. It's a love song from the Age of Heroes. The story of a lady pining for her long-lost sweetheart. No one remembers who wrote it, but I've loved it since I was a little girl. You know, something's been bothering me. Veronica? We were born at the same time, so our leaves bloomed at the same time, didn't they? Do you think they'll... fall at the same time, too? Hmm, I don't know. You've always been a bit slow, to be honest. But I hope they do. <laughs> Serena, I want you to promise me something. If anything happens to me, promise you'll finish this without me. <gasps> I shan't promise anything of the sort. I don't even want to think of such things. If only I had promised to do as she asked. Perhaps she might have been able to make her sacrifice more easily. She was right, you know. I always have been slow. When it came to talking or walking or learning magic, I was always a step behind her. But now I must tread my own path. Alone. <laughs> I hate to ask, but would you mind awfully not going anywhere for a little while? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry to be such a bother, but I shan't be one any longer. Veronica died to save me. I must make the most of my life. For her sake. Hmm. <sighs> no more tears. That was the old me. Goodbye. What in the world? I feel... different. <gasps> Thank you, dear sister. Serena can now use all of Veronica's spells and abilities. While searching for his friends, Tran is finally reunited with Serena. She leads the party to Arbor, where they learn that Veronica did not survive the fall of Yggdrasil. She sacrificed herself in order to protect her companions from the catastrophe wrought by Mordigan's rebirth. A solemn ceremony is held in her memory, and as the people of Arbor mourn, Benedictus tells the party of Cetacea, the holy creature who once soared through the clouds with Erdwin upon her back, and pledges to find some means by which she might be summoned. The party retire to the inn to await the results of investigation, but Tran finds himself unable to sleep. Stepping outside, he soon finds Serena strumming her harp. 
She tells of her sadness at never having been able to match her sister's strength of resolve, but vows to find her own way forward now that she's gone. With that, she cuts her hair and bids Veronica a final fond farewell. As if in response, energy flows from Veronica's staff, imbuing her with all her sister's powers. So these three here are Veronica's powers. Let's take a look. Unfortunately, I, she's got to div divvy up her SP among these, I guess. So we'll take a look at, at what these hidden skills might be as soon as I make a save. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave it alone. Veronica has given me so much. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. Oh, but please, don't let me keep you. I think I'll stay here for a while and listen to the breeze. You should go back to the inn and rest. Well, at least it stopped raining. If the sky was crying before, it seems to have cheered up a little now. Why do you say we head back to the inn? It's almost done. We should try to get some sleep while we still can. Hey honey, what was that light I saw shining on the terrace just now? Could it have been the first rays of the rising sun? No. No, it was much more fiery. You know, it reminded me of a certain someone. The first time I met Serena, she seemed like such an airhead. The kind of girl who walks straight into trouble without even realizing it, you know? She sure has changed. Veronica's up there somewhere looking down. I bet she's proud of what she's seeing. I don't want to dislike to watch your little sis finally grow up. Well, will you look at that? The sky's cleared right up. Perhaps it had something to do with that sad song coming to an end. That was Serena singing, was it not? When Mortigan was reborn as Lord of Shadows, the fate of this world was thrown into disarray. Apparently you are not interested in having new dialogue like everyone else does. <laughs> I heard a mournful melody drifting on the night air. I presume it must have been Serena strumming her heart. Veronica's parents were struck numb at, with grief. Oh, they saw this one. Welcome back to our humble hostelry, Luminary. Will you be returning to your room? No. I see. I expect you still wish to pay your respects to your fallen friend. Take as long as you need, I prithee. Yes. Very well. If you would, follow me. Father Benedictus came here at dawn, but you were still sleeping. He said that he had some important news to share with you. When I told him that you were not yet awake, he departed from the top of the mountain, murmuring under his breath all the while. I wonder what this news could be. Good morning! Or should I say good afternoon? The sun's already high in the sky. Father Benedictus dropped by earlier. He says he has something to show us at the top of the mountain. Everyone else has gone on ahead. But I thought I'd wait for you. Shall we go and join them? There's a little door to the right of the cathedral. The path is through there. I wasn't going to mention it, but... Father Benedictus popped by the inn earlier this morning and said that he had something to show us at the top of the mountain. I'm sure everyone's up there now, waiting for us. Let's go and join them, shall we? The path that leads to the summit is through a little door to the side of the cathedral. Veronica meant so much to us. Not only was she a mighty mage destined to follow in Serenica's footsteps, but she is the life and soul of this village. The tale of her noble sacrifice will live long in legend. Generations from now, the children of Arboreal shall continue to offer prayers for the repose of her immortal soul. I 
I still cannot believe that Veronica is really gone. Will I truly never hear her mischievous laughter again? The village elders have been in deep discussions over where best to erect Veronica's memorial stone. They want to position it in a restful sanctuary somewhere, a place where her spirit can rest in peace. It has become something of a common occurrence in recent weeks, but it always breaks my heart to witness a funeral service for one younger than I. So many young lives are snatched away when the Lord of Shadows laid waste to Yggdrasil. I can but pray for the repose of their souls. My sister is gone, but now this nice lady who has lost her own family is taking care of me. I will never forget my old family, but together we can start a new one. So many lives have been lost since the world tree fell to the earth. One cannot know if tomorrow will be one's last day alive, or that day that peace returns for good. But so long as we live and breathe, we can dream of a brighter tomorrow, and one day that dream will surely come true. My mother told me that Veronica will not be coming back, but why? I really want to see her again. Tell me, Veronica. My mother says that all the other people who have gone away won't be coming back either. But you'll come back, won't you, Luminary? Won't you? Welcome, valued customer. Now that the World Tree has fallen, we have not to turn to for spiritual succor. There is no home in Arbora that has not been touched by grief. So long as we have our lives, we must endure. The hopes and dreams of the dearly departed rest upon our shoulders now. Good day, Luminary. Come, let us offer a prayer that Veronica and the World Tree might find peace. Ever since Mordegon was reborn as Lord of Shadows, the rich soils of Arborea have lost their fecundity. And yet, I see small shoots of pushing through the ash. I shall study these plants to determine what might yet thrive in the scorched earth. If fortune holds, perhaps I might be able to establish a potato patch. Serena, is that you? I did not recognize you for a moment. Do I really look that different? It's rather embarrassing to have everyone staring at me all of a sudden. Did you not say to me that you were growing in your hair so that you could braid it as Veronica did? Yes, but that's all in the past now. I don't need to copy my sister's hairstyle to be like her. Veronica will always be in my heart. Ugh, I should not have had that ceremony a cup of wine after the service last night. I feel so sick I can hardly stand. What would Veronica say if she could see me now? Uh, what an ignominious wretch I am. My my, Serena certainly does look very different with short hair. Who does she remind me of? Ah yes, she looks just like the portrait of the Holy Sage Serenica in my old school book, though it is not so much the hair as the demeanor. Ever since the twins were born, they were lauded as the reincarnation of the Holy Sage Serenica. Now that Veronica is gone, it falls to Serena alone to fulfill the destiny that the world tree had in store for them. Good morning, Tran. Father Benedict has passed through here this morning on his way to the top of the mountain. He said that you were to join him there, and that I should allow you to pass. I know not what he wishes to tell you, but please, go to him with my blessing. So glad you could finally join us. Yggdrasil blessed me with another vision in the night. I saw Veronica standing upon this very ledge. It is known as Luminary's Landing. When Erdwin descended from the heavens after facing the Dark One, this is where he alighted. And this is the Calamus Flute. 
In my dream, Veronica played upon it. It once belonged to the great sage, Sir Enica. She left it in Arborea on her final visit, the day after the Dark One finally fell. I gave it to Veronica as a memento of her heroic ancestor. And yet, when I awoke this morning, there it was, upon my pillow. It is a sign. The flute will reveal the path you must tread. Serena, my child, if you would be so kind. Of course. be doing it wrong. But if Veronica was playing it in Father Benedictus's vision, it must be the key. Can you try, perhaps? The mark! It's glowing! No, no fishing mini games. What the? A fishing rod? I fear it is I who am seeing visions. <gasps> you got a bite! Oh, go on, darling! Reel it in! as I suspected. It was upon her back that you rode in my dream. The sacred conveyance of the luminary, Cetacea. It seems that she heeds the call of the flute. You must play it whenever you require her aid. Train acquires the Calamus flute. Go, luminary and seek out the floating island. It is the world tree's will. Whatever awaits you there will surely aid you in the fight against the Lord of Shadows. Do not let Veronica's sacrifice be in vain. Now, play. Hmm. even unlock the loveliest catch. Awarded for recovering the flute left behind by the late Veronica, and with it summoning the serene being known as Cetacea. It's not safe to land here. To dismount Cetacea, look for the floating islands of, or pillars of sparkling light. Whoops, I was trying to dismount, but I was hitting the button and it canceled the dialogue. Dismount Cetacea at Luminary's Landing. Uh, give me a second. Can I party talk here? There's no one in the party to talk to at the moment.
A solemn ceremony is held in her memory, and as the people of Arborea mourn, Benedictus tells the party of Cetacea, the holy creature once soared through the clouds with Urgwin upon her back, and pledges to find some means by which she might be summoned. While waiting the results of Benedictus' investigation, Tran finds himself unable to sleep. Stepping outside, he sees Serena, who says a final goodbye to her beloved sister, and in doing so, inherits her powers. The next morning, our hero heads to the Arborean Highlands to meet with Benedictus and the others. The high priest offers him a gift, the Calamus Flute, which once belonged to the legendary sage Serenica. With it, the party summon the great whale Cetacea and climb upon her back to seek out the floating island Benedictus spoke of. Luminary's Landing Oh, hello! If you want to summon Cetacea again, you should play the Calamus Flute at the top of the mountain. As long as you're standing on the platform with a mark of light engraved on it, she'll come and collect us right away. Hmm. A whale that flies through the air. Summoning such a creature is but a part of the Luminary's power. I cannot imagine what manner of miracle awaits us next. But why would the Divine Being be a whale of all things? Truly the heavens work in mysterious ways. Then, laddie. We're above the clouds up here, so you can see the Fortress of Fear clear as day. While we are waiting for you two to arrive, I made a promise to Veronica. I swore that I'd bring that place crashing down and put an end to the Lord of Shadows once and for all. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but... Luminary's Landing, where Erdwin first landed Cetacea all those years ago. I would never have thought of fishing for a whale from a clifftop. Those ancient heroes had such strange ideas. Fabulous! Our adventure so far has been full of twists and turns, but meeting Cetacea has been the most dramatic development yet. When that flute turned into a fishing rod and you hooked the flying whale out of the sky, I was like, wow, you Luminaries sure know how to put on a show. Huh. While we were waiting for you and Serena up here, I took a quick look over the side of the cliff. Man, I nearly blacked out when I saw how high up we were. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I'm scared of heights or anything, but a drop like that would make anyone's mind melt, even hard-headed Hendrick. Let's take a look. <sighs> I can't stand this place anymore. Seeing all these gloomy faces just reminds me of her. Come on, let's follow the old guy's advice and go look for the floating island. We could really do with a change of scenery. Hmm. The villagers have made a memorial to Veronica in the old grove. They put it in the same spot where he found her staff. When our adventure is over, we should go there and pay our respects. I'm sure Veronica would want to be the first to know that she saved the world. Hmm. Seeing this village once more gives a stark reminder of what we must do. We must defeat Mordegon and restore peace to the world. That is the duty we owe to those who are no longer with us. Let's have a nice sweet chat, shall we? They say that cutting your hair symbolizes a break with the past. Serena's decided to put her sadness behind her and live on for her sister's sake. Ah, it seems such a shame to lose such beautiful long locks, but you've got to hand it to the girl. She doesn't look half bad with a bob. <laughs> yes? Can't believe we can go flying on the back of a whale whenever we want. I feel like I'm dreaming. <sighs> Veronica once told me she had a soft spot for big friendly animals. She would have loved to have met Cetacea. Huh. When I close my eyes, it all comes back to me. The vision we saw of Ronnie's final moments, the funeral. We have to stop Mordegon. I don't want to see anyone else suffer like her poor parents did. Welcome back to Arborea Luminary, the home of the Keepers. Though the peace we strove to protect has long since slipped through our fingers, still we can but persevere. By our efforts, the legend of the Luminary may yet be kept alive, and with it, the memory of dear Veronica. Luminary, I thank the heavens that you are still with us. So long as you are alive, hope lives also. Pray, go forth, defeat the hated Lord of Shadows, and restore peace to this ruined realm. That is what our little angel would have wanted. Serena is not a child anymore. If it is her heartfelt wish to join you on your travels, I will not stand in her way. But I beg you, Luminary, do not take any unnecessary risks. Promise me that you will all come back to us safe and sound. How does it end, I wonder? Dost thou recall, my love, when we two did gaze upon the beauty of all, Ardrea? The sky so deep and blue did seem like to swallow us whole. The sea burned matter red, stained by the light of the setting sun. And all around us, Yggdrasil's leaves did shine with the light of life. The heavenly vision I saw with thee that day seared itself into my very soul. Never shall I forget it, though I live for all eternity. Fair words indeed, would you not agree? It is the text of a letter written by an unknown hand that was discovered inside a book in the library here in Arborea. I've read it so many times now that I am able to recite its contents by heart. However, the letter is incomplete. I have searched and searched for the second page, but alas, it is nowhere to be found. Not here in Arborea, at any rate. You travel a great deal, do you not? Would you aid me in searching for the letter's no doubt lyrical and heart-wrenching ending? The minister wants you to search for the next part of the love letter he found. No. What a shame. No doubt the letter's end is just as eloquent as its beginning. It is a pity you will not be witness to its true beauty. You will? Well, thank you. The villagers tell me that the first page of the letter was discovered between the pages of an ancient Arborean tome. Alas, this tome was sold some years ago to a Galapian no Galapi Gal Galapalladan noblewoman. 
It is my belief that the second page of the letter is inside that book still. I would ask that you journey to Galapolis and inquire at the homes of the noble families of that realm. I wish you the best of luck in your search. Train accepts the A Long Lost Literary Love quest. How does it end there, Wonder? Fabulous, is it not? The more I recite these words, the more meaningful they seem. I must know how the missive ends. The villagers tell me that the first page of the letter was discovered in the pages of an ancient Arborean tome. Alas, this tome was sold some years ago to a Galapagos noble woman. It is my belief that the second page of the letter is inside the book still. Luminary, you will never believe this, but if you dry antidotal herbs and steep them in boiling water, it makes the most delicious tea. Well, perhaps not the most delicious. It is rather bitter, but so much more refreshing than the infusion of dry stale leaves we have been drinking since the fall. The Lord of Shadows has stolen much from us, but he will never take my tea time. Fidelis and Alma have a rather anxious streak, though they may appear calm on the surface. Deep down they are racked with concern for Serena's safety. Luminary, promise us that you will keep her safe. Good day, Luminary. Veronica's Marmora has been erected in a verdant sanctum at the end of this path. If you should wish to offer a prayer for her, please proceed. Veronica was a sharp-tongued soul. No doubt she would have answered my own prayers with a stinging repost, but I'm sure she would be overjoyed to hear from you. I wasn't going to mention it, but... Oh, isn't it wonderful, Tran? Flying through the sky on Scottish's back and seeing all the places we've been from way up high. Now, I wonder where this floating island Father Benedict has told us about might be. Time to stop looking down and start looking around. Could it be... The princess has been scared of heights ever since she was a girl, yet she seems completely unafraid when we ride Cetacea. Hmm. It seems that no matter what unexpected maneuvers the creature makes, one feels neither the wind nor the risk of falling. Very curious. Ha! <laughs> Now we've got Cetacea on our side, we can get all the way to Mordigan's gates. Once we found a way through that magic barrier, it'll be time to face the blighter down once and for all. It's been a long road, but our journey's nearly at an end. Let's finish this, not just for us, but for Veronica. Listen. I can't believe we can go flying in the back of a world whenever we want. I feel like I'm dreaming. Let's have a nice little chat. As soon as we've done something about that black barrier, we'll be all set for the final showdown with the Lord of Shadows. Our adventure is about to enter its final act. Let's make sure we're all set for the big finale, darling. We don't want to fluff our lines before the curtain falls. <laughs> Serena really went all out for her new haircut, huh? I bet she's been growing that hair for years. It must have been a real big decision to chop it all off. <laughs> anyway, I think her new look really suits her. In loving memory of Veronica, daughter of Fidelis and Alma, sister of Serena, scion of Serenica, and savior of the Luminary. World tree has fallen. Serenica's pure white robes are blackened with smoke and ash. No matter how many tears we shed, they will not wash the stains away. And even if they could, we have no cause to cry. So long as you are here, Luminary, we know that all will be well again in time. Somewhere in those boundless skies hangs the floating island I saw in my dream. I bid you seek it out, for you will surely find there a power to banish the darkness. Go forth, Tran, and strike down the hated Lord of Shadows, the source of all evil in this world. Do not allow Veronica's sacrifice to be in vain. Okay, let's go ahead and make a save. We'll also go ahead and build up some of the character parts. Let's see here. So this is a pet power. We'll go and claim that. Okay, there's another pet power right here. So we're going to pick that up too. Light of the Living Dead.
Surprise! Bonus skill points awarded. Anybody, anything else? Yeah, I don't have a lot of points for Eric, but we'll go ahead and get this one also because it is a pet power. Falcon's Fury. This one's a pet power. Power. Pet power. Love hurts. This is a pet power right here. Snooze and Brews. Order for activating 30 of Savannah's skill panels. Jolton Juggler. Hit the hay. Sleep. Humanoid foes. I have almost every ability for Silvando. Rab. Let's take a look at Rab. This is a pet power piece. I'll go ahead and get that then. Right there, so I guess we'll get that. Kiss of Death. All right, there.
awarded for activating 30 of Hendrix's skill panels. Master at Arms. I don't have enough points for that. Zap Trophy. <laughs> Solitary Luminary. Awarded for activating 40 of our hero skill panels. I know I don't have any enough points, but I was just looking to see where all the other pet powers I might need to start working towards are. Put this outfit back on. I, I put her in the normal outfit because it, the 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 cutscenes I think go better with her normal outfit. It was Veronica's last wish that you complete your journey, Luminary. I pray that you have the best of luck in the battles to come. Now, although I really want to check out the whale stuff first, I'm going to do that one side exploration that I had mentioned earlier. Okay, there might be more than one area. I think there are a few areas to check, so we'll turn left first. But I didn't check this out yet. Silvando. There's something funny in there. Mark my words, honey. Something's not right around here. Do not recall such a place being here when last we visited. Could it really have been built since then? But now is not the time to ponder such matters. We must make haste. Onward. There's a book called History of Erdrea, History of Time. <laughs> Try and take it from the shelf and has a closer look. We are Watchers. This is Legend of Watchers. Legend of Law of Time. Spirits weave time. Spirits born from Erdrea. Spirits of lost time. Light governs time. Holy light. Spirits of lost time guard holy light. Light glows bright, burns, explodes. When it does, lost things return. Eternity is undone. Riveting. Okay, well, I didn't really discover anything on this side. Yeah, then I noticed the, the ruins, and I'm like, that wasn't there before. Um, but there's also an area where I can climb using one of those skeletal beasts, so we'll do that too. I know where I can find a glowing skeletal beast, but it seems silly that I have to go there and come back. There's not one right here. It's fine.
darkness. Mini metal. There's one I missed near Octagonia. Loading. all the resource nodes in the map and then back to the ruins where there was one claw mark on the wall that I can climb Okay, I don't see any on the western side in Dundraso, but it looks like there might be one more in this direction. here. Yeah, I thought I saw a spark in this direction. Okay. Alright, that seems to be everything in this region. So let's go ahead and fly off. We'll go back to Luminary's Landing.